I'm Dev. I'm a grad student here uh, working on security things. And I'm going to talk about work I did with Adrian Felt at Google. Uh, so a popular myth in, uh, in uh, security is that, uh, is that we shouldn't trust users, given a choice between uh, giving uh, the user, uh, uh, if the user is given a choice between doing something security right and dancing pigs, the user will always choose dancing pigs. There's a Wikipedia article on dancing pigs if you're curious to know more. Uh, and this is, uh, this is often repeated even in academia. This is a paper from uh, 2011 saying blah, 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 users don't read warnings, don't understand warnings, don't heed warnings, even when situations are really, really bad for them. Uh, and so the problem here is that all these, uh, all these uh, claims are based on uh, studies done on Internet Explorer 6 warnings. Uh, I don't know how many of you, re you remember them, remember using them, but they were pretty ugly. And uh, this is not the case today. Right? Today's warning in Google Chrome are much different. Full page, scary. There's a dude coming out of the computer trying to grab your keyboard. Uh, <laughs> you can't see how to ignore the warning. There's no no button. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so, and that's not just that Chrome warning, right? Like pretty much Firefox and Chrome, both of them, all warnings are similar. And so what I was curious to know was that didn't that all that work we do change anything? Didn't the situation improve? And so for the next few minutes, I'll be talking about a large scale measurement study we did to, uh, to measure the response of users to these modern warnings in the real world. So when I say measurement, uh, what did we measure? Uh, we measured this metric called click-through rate, which is the number of warnings ignored by the user divided by the number of warnings shown. And so 100% 100, 100 click-through rate is the users are just ignoring everything, and that, as a security person, makes me sad. Uh, and so when I talk about this as the metric, what is the ideal click-through rate we want to achieve? As I just said, 100% click-through rate makes me sad, so a 0% click-through rate will make me happy. And so ideally, we would want, I would want to live in a world where click-through rate for warnings is 0%. How did we measure this click-through rate? We use this mechanism called browser telemetry. Essentially, the way it works is that uh, last year, in May 2013, if you were using Chrome or Firefox, uh, you were running code involved in the study. And if you agreed to share data uh, with, Chrome, uh, with Google or Mozilla, then, then your data was involved in the study. So roughly like 25 to 30 million warnings were involved in, uh, in the numbers that I'll be showing you next. So what did we find? Uh, we've, I'll talk about quickly just two things. Uh, the results we found for malware and phishing warnings and the results we found for SSL warnings. Uh, first, the malware and phishing warnings. Uh, this is the click-through rate for Firefox and Chrome malware warnings. And this is the click-through rate for Firefox and Chrome phishing warnings. Uh, the first thing is that it's less than 25%. Uh, this was really surprising to me. Uh, I was expecting something like 85% or 80%. And, and the fact that it's less than a quarter is really nice, that, that users are kind of doing the right thing, and they're not always just like, screw these security people. They're, they're kind of listening to us, thankfully. Uh, another thing we noticed is that uh, the click-through rate for phishing is, uh, is actually higher. Uh, that you know, the Firefox phishing click-through rate is a bit higher than the malware click-through rate. Uh, and so maybe this is a rational decision by the users, because if you know someone is trying to phish you, you can not give them your username and password, and so just see what, they are, uh, what are the pills they're selling. Uh, but, but yeah, and, uh, and uh, we don't have a lot of demographic information, but we do have what operating system these users are using. And so we noticed that uh, pretty much across the board, Linux click-through rates are much higher than Windows click-through rates. And so this leads to an hypothesis that uh, a greater degree, the more skilled, the more elite you are, uh, the more likely you are to do uh, dangerous things uh, if Linux corresponds to more technical skills. And that, that actually uh, I've seen in like, pretty much every talk I've gi given in CS departments, everyone says I click through all the warnings. So, so, so maybe that is true. Uh, the next thing I'll talk about is what we saw for SSL warnings. Uh, this is the click-through rate for Firefox, 33%, and uh, nearly 70% for Chrome SSL warnings. Not very good for Chrome uh, right now. And so uh, there were two possible reasons for this, uh, warning appearance and number of clicks. Uh, we asked the Chrome team to investigate. Uh, they just like copied the Mozilla Firefox warning into Chrome and deployed it to the Chrome users and see, hey, what happens? And they found that nearly a third of the difference can be attributed to just the color and the icons that Mozilla Firefox uses. And a quarter of the difference can be attributed to Mozilla Firefox requiring more clicks to bypass the warning. And so let's ignore all the numbers, but more broadly, the implications of this study are that browser security warnings can be, are effective. They can be improved, but they are pretty effective. And uh, we can have impact on user behavior if we, if we think about how we design warnings. And, uh, and as security practitioners, we should just not ignore the user completely. The user al almost always want to, uh, probably wants to do the right thing when it comes to security. Uh, thanks a lot for listening. I'm Dev. My website and everything is on the slide. Thanks a lot. Thank you.